What's going on, everybody? It's Childish. We're back at it again with a brand new series. Today, we're going to be busting out an RT analysis from the couple of my fights, whether they're live or replays. We're going to be talking about them from top to bottom, breaking down that picket ban process, as well as uh, seeing the fight as it unfolds. What we're going to try to do is just kind of go through the, the process of this and then hopefully learn from my mistakes or my triumphs to go ahead and improve our knowledge as a community, okay? Um, first fight that we got going on today, we're just going to do one today. Um, uh, it's going to be versus Dan Tots here. So uh, in this particular situation, we'll kind of break down each round of picks here and then we'll go right into the fight. All right, and here we are. He's going to lay out uh, Ganymede and I'm going to bring Ciara Bastet. Pretty standard uh First round of picks on both ends, uh, but here's where it gets interesting. Um, he lays out the Hathor for a little bit of crowd control, which is really deadly in combination with the Ganymede. And of course, Wolf's to try to counter what he's seeing from my Ciara. So considering he has the Hathor laid out, I brought out the Villagel um, for obviously the immunity, the cleanse, the buff removal, and then of course Iris to kind of back it up um, as a secondary buff removal passive healer um, to kind of go along with uh, Bastet's sustain. So right as of right now, what I'm looking at, Ganymede is just too strong with both of these units here, but because I have double buff removal, uh, I'm looking to ban Hathor all day. I do not want to let Ganymede and Hathor get it down, especially if I'm going to be running one immunity, which at this particular time I was planning on doing, um, un unless he laid out something you know different. Uh, of course, here's the crazy thing about it. Uh, I was thinking he was going to keep on going with the control, but he did not. He laid out two kind of Zerg type of units, uh, one of which has a counterattack if you don't attack, if you attack other monsters. Uh, he has a counterattack to hit you and can potentially stun. And then, of course, you got a counterattack uh, from Laika. doesn't stun anymore, but does have the dots. So my thought process is he's trying to uh, use the Gany hathor combination, silence everybody, or excuse me, sleep everybody, and then use his two Zerg type units to try to, try to you know wear me down one by one. Um, so considering that, um, that aspect here, I want to take out... Hathor right now and the fact of the matter is that he played like it which generally is like my one of my top five units that I like to throw in there um, so uh, Because of the fact that I feel like He probably is gonna go be back and forth between either CR or Veligil. I was thinking he was gonna ban Veligil here um, I actually uh, decide to test out a new unit um, and here's the thing about it Garrow the fire ninja that I'm gonna be busting out here shortly if you take a look at the layout that he has as far all the units with the exception of Ganymede uh, had multi-hits and also that was the only unit that had any kind of uh, uh, like a buff removal or whatnot so I felt if I can take out Ganymede right away um, that's going to be like the determining factor in this particular fight because if he continuously um, resurges Wusa to get the immunity back up I'm going to have a hard time um, if I cannot you know break that immunity down here so uh, I'm definitely getting the first turn here um, I figured his Wusa was going to be a little faster, but it wasn't. Um, notice that I did get the silence on Ganymede. So the goal was to silence Ganymede, and then uh, if that didn't work, use Veligil to go ahead and try to remove the will so that I can follow up with uh, the Dragon Attack, which, of course, if you guys don't know, is a two turn or multi hit, uh, two hit effect that allows you to try to stun. I think it's a 60% chance or 65% chance when this goes max out, being able to do it every two turns. So considering that. Um, my Garrow is obviously out of sync here. If you notice here, he actually went before Villagel. That's something that I got to fix. Um, I decided to go for uh, Laika because of the fact that generally people are uh, building, you know, Laika is relatively squishy, you know, more yellow. And so two opportunities to stun it. Um, I wasn't worried about the immunity there because, again, if he's locked down, that's just one less DPS to worry about here. So, again, we're still going to try to work down uh, Ganymede here. It looks like I was trying to break the immunity off just to try to wear him down. But uh, from what I remember, I should be going back over uh, to Ganymede to get over that will and then try to stun. Uh, of course, I get a clutch stun by Iris on both uh, Jing Zay and Ganymede. And now, um, again, just trying to provide that defense break because I'm trying to get Ganymede. Uh, as quick as possible here. So um, he does ventilate Wusa, so Wusa should be able to go. But of course, uh, RNG is in my favor. So I get the crazy triple stun, use Garrow to get the double hits um, to counter that passive that uh, he is bringing. Um, considering that Ganymede's locked down, I want to do, I don't I don't want them to do as much damage as possible because, so I'm going to put that attack break on Jing Zay since I'm focusing down um, Ganymede and I don't want that counterattack passive to really come into play and do a ton of damage. 
Again, the damage aspect is negligible. It's more so the stun, and I didn't have immunity up until now. So I think at this particular time, he's pretty worried. His Velojo, or sorry, his Ganymede is really, really down. And so again, because Ganymede's locked down, I go for Xing Zhe, and that's pretty much GG, okay? So again, um, was this the craziest fight in the world? Definitely not. Um, but I just kind of wanted to break it down for you because it's, it's ra random things that you generally see um, in those particular fights that kind of make you think, you know, wow, did I do this right? Did I do it wrong? So, uh, as we're gonna, we're getting ready to check out the runes on Garrow here, um, cause I just kind of wanted to do like a mini showcase as well. Um, with what you guys saw, the pick and ban process, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys thought we did good there. Um, what we did wrong. What do you think the enemy did wrong? Or if I did something wrong, let me go. So again, Garrow, Fire Ninja, first skill doing damage based on uh, attack speed, scales with attack speed, and provides the uh, provides the dot there, continuous damage. Second skill, uh, two chances for a 65% chance uh, to stun the monster. So, um, and then of course that passive, if it takes a, a fatal blow, it's going to uh, increase your attack bar by 50%. And of course, if you are the next one up to go with your full attack bar, you're gonna be able to reset that skill or reset that passive and then be able to essentially stay alive for one more turn. So really, really unique uh, passive there. Of course, there's only uh, you know a couple of monsters or a handful of monsters that can actually uh, protect that or, or oblivion that passive. So uh, he's one of these fun units where I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking to kind of work him in because he doesn't just seem uh, he doesn't really seem too much of a threat, but it's it's units like this that people forget about the uh, the cooldown times on the monsters, right? Units like Garrow, units like Olivia, units like Ethna, units that are really premium monsters that have you know two turn cooldown or three turn cooldown on some of their main skills. So I mean, think about this passive and the mechanic of the attack bar and what we could do if we had a unit like Rakuni, Konamiya. Olivia, you know, something that can research and assist you if you don't get it back in. Um, that being said, let's not forget the fact that um, despite the fact that all these units had like single hits, um, if they do have a violent set, they definitely have the chance to proc it and get it. So it is, it is, uh, you know, it is vulnerable at times. But the cool thing about this is, is that um, because of, the, of how the passive works, um, you can play around with the runes and not really cater too much on the attack, but more so, or sorry, not too much on the HP, but more so on the attack and the, um, and the, you know, the, the, the attack and the speed here. Um, you know, who knows what you want to do with regards to runes, but maybe Nemesis will come into play here to mess around with that. Um, but again, overall, uh, super fun unit. Uh, notice that uh, I, I think I landed every single stun that I did. Um, but I did not have any accuracy whatsoever. Uh, he reminds me of that Theo Mars with uh, I, little to no accuracy, but I see it feels like I land a defense break every single time, or very most for that matter, and that 60% chance of sun. So um, that's going to be it, guys. Let me know what you guys think, again, for this whole kind of RT analysis. Again, this was kind of like a starter uh, fight. Obviously, we're going to look at two, you know, more complicated fights, ones that we can break down more, and more specifically, ones that we make mistakes. I'm not trying to cater this to, like, let me show you guys all my wins because I'm a boss. Like, no, I really want to like break down and kind of work with you guys and try to figure out what can we do or what what did we do wrong and how can we get proof of that and hopefully my gameplay my mistakes will allow you to progress with regards to your rta because uh, as you guys might have guessed there's a lot of talk about um you know the rtas and the rewards and, and possibly things changing down the road so uh, if that is the case i definitely know that there's going to be a more of a motivation for people to do rta and if that's the case we definitely need to work on that um, especially for some of you guys that already have your arena towers max or whatnot here. So um, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in for this episode, this RT analysis video. Uh, it's your boy Childish and Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you in the next one.